this right here is the difference for Rolle's theorem compared to the extreme value theorem. Okay, Rolle's theorem says that if f of a equals f of b, so the y value of the beginning of your interval and the y value of the end of your interval, if they have the same value, then there is at least one number in that interval for which the derivative equals zero. It's just a little bit more specific than the extreme value theorem. The extreme value theorem, we could have maximums or minimums at the endpoints. Rolle's theorem kind of guarantees that we have a maximum or minimum somewhere in the interval. Okay, so here is an illustration. Okay, the one on the left is an illustration of the extreme value theorem. Okay, um, this is the EDT right here. The extreme value theorem is the one on the left. f of a does not equal f of b. The y value at the beginning of your interval isn't the same as the y value at the end of your interval. Um, but we still have a minimum and maximum. But the maximum uh, for this function, where it begins at 1, 6, and a minimum at 5, 2. Okay, but if we modify that a little bit, and I change it to a parabola, where f of 1 and f of 5 have the same y value, then this is an example of Rolle's theorem. And that point C, somewhere between 1 and 5, is where the derivative equals 0. You'll notice in the first one, there's not a point where the derivative equals 0. The extreme value theorem does not say that there is a point where the derivative will equal zero. The extreme value theorem just says that if you're continuous and differentiable, then somewhere on your interval you have a maximum or minimum, including the endpoints. Okay, uh, the endpoints are not necessarily what we consider a true max or a min, um, in that the fact that the function changes from increasing and decreasing or decreasing and increasing. Um, Rolle's theorem. These are what we consider, when, when you hear the term maximum or minimum, type, usually you think either a valley of your function or a peak of your function, not necessarily just um, the endpoints as the first example shows. Okay. So Rolle's theorem is more of the traditional maximum or minimum where the derivative equals zero. Okay. It's more specific than the extreme value theorem. Okay. So, what we're going to do here with this example, this example says, find the two intercepts of the function x squared minus 3x plus 2 and show that the derivative equals 0 at some point between the two intercepts. And so they didn't give us an interval this time, but we're creating the interval because if we find the two intercepts, then that means that both those places, the y value is zero. So we're finding the a and b, and then we're going to show that there's some point between there that uh, the derivative equals zero. So if we're finding the intercepts, that's where the function is equal to zero. So we're going to set x squared minus 3x plus 2 equal to zero. It's a quadratic. So that means we have to factor. This would be x minus 2 times x minus 1. I'm just showing all the work. Okay, so our a and b here, our interval is from 1 to 2. Because f of 1 is equal to 0, f of 2 is equal to 0. So there's some point between 1 and 2 where our derivative equals 0, and we're going to show that. So we're going to take the derivative of our function. We get 2x minus 3, and we're going to set it equal to 0. So we add 3, divide by 2, 3 halves, where 3 halves is 1.5, and that is right in the middle of our interval from 1 to 2. 
So really, I could give a rough sketch of this function based on this information. Um, I know that it has intercepts at 1 and at 2, and it has a minimum at 1.5. I know that it's a minimum because of what I know about parabolas. It's x squared, so it's upward facing. And the y-intercept is positive 2. So it looks something like this. Now, that's not really the purpose of this exercise, but I did want to throw that little piece in there um, for you to realize kind of what these things can show you. Okay? All right, so let's look at another example. Our function is x to the fourth minus 2x squared. We are asked to find all values of c in the interval between negative 2 and 2, such that the derivative equals 0. So we're given the endpoints. Um, now, for the sake of um, absolute correctness, we always need to confirm that the endpoints of our interval give us the same value. Okay, so I'm going to plug in negative 2 into my function. And negative 2 to the fourth is positive 16. Negative 2 squared is positive 4 times negative 2 is negative 8. So that gives us a value of 8. When we plug in positive 2, 2 to the fourth minus 2 times 2 squared, we get the same thing. 16 minus 8, which is 8. Okay, so Rolle's theorem can be applied here because f of a is equal to f of b. So we know there's at least one point where the derivative equals 0. We just need to find those. So we need to take the derivative. f prime of x is 4x cubed minus 4x. If we set that equal to 0, then we need to factor. It has a GCF of 4x. We get x squared minus 1 when we factor out that 4x. Now, I encourage you to continue factoring. Technically, you could solve x squared minus 1 using square roots, but most people, when they do that, they forget to include the positive and the negative. So 4x is equal to 0, x plus 1 is equal to 0, and x minus 1 is equal to 0. So we get 0, negative 1, and positive 1. Those are all three in our interval. So those are the three c values. Okay, the places where f prime of c equals 0.